everything I see, unemployment will be 16% instead of 10. Stocks will be down 86 S&P instead of 57. Everything's going to be about 50. Best way to look at this next downturn, if I'm right, it'll be 50% worse than 2008 to nine. And that is the worst downturn any of us have seen in our lifetime. The early 80s and the 73 to 75 downturn were not as strong as unemployment or stock crashes as that one. This is gonna be stronger than that, if I'm right. One of the things people missed, when we had the last crash, okay, um, basically a lot of people exited, okay? And this didn't come back. People gotta remember a lot, the baby boomers are, are are almost fully in retirement. They're they're in their retirement stage. You know, they peaked way back. You know, in 2007. So they've been moving increasingly into retirement and will continue into 2019. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, in, into 2029 to do that before they're fully retired. But they are retiring. They are leaving the workforce and not coming back. So that's what people are missing. Oh, unemployment is is remaining pretty low. It's because a lot of people have left, okay? They're not measuring those people. What happened to those people? And, and, and of course, they're gonna be spending less money in retirement. People peak at 46, plateau into their mid, mid to late 50s, and then spend less in their retirement and death. So, so the largest generation in history is just gonna be spending less, and that is gonna be a drag on the economy, and that is what would have, without all this stimulus, caused much higher unemployment and much weaker stock markets from 2008 through 2023 here. Now I say, because they pushed this off, we don't probably bottom in this downturn in stocks until mid 2024, maybe late 2024. So a couple of years later than the natural time, which would have been late 2022 in these cycles. Um, and, and we have yet to see the deepest downturn yet. This downturn should be 50% stronger than the 2008 to nine downturn, okay? And, and, and the stock market should be down 86% S&P instead of 57%. Everything I see, unemployment will be 16% instead of 10. Stocks will be down 86 S&P instead of 57. Everything's gonna be about 50. Best way to look at this next downturn, if I'm right, it'll be 50% worse than 2008 to nine. And that is the worst downturn any of us have seen in our lifetime. The early 80s and the 73 to 75 downturn were not as strong as unemployment or stock crashes as that one. This is gonna be stronger than that if I'm right. So, so if I'm right, you better get out of the way. And if I'm wrong, you might miss you know a couple months of this thing before you realize I'm wrong. But I'm telling you, if I'm right, it's likely to follow through. We're we're well into this third wave down, and that's the that's the damaging one. That's the dangerous one. I think you're going to see that hit in the next couple of months. So just give me two months of you being conservative and see if I'm right. Then you can listen to me and continue to follow me. But just be careful the next two months is my advice today. The economy, why why can't this generation afford real estate? Because we had the greatest real estate bubble in history. A second one, which you never see, as I say, two bubbles in a row. We had a first real estate bubble in 2000 and then a second one now. Real estate is the most unaffordable it's ever been. And we didn't have a real estate unaffordability problem even in the roaring 20s bubble okay it was a stock bubble because because real estate was too hard to finance back then back then you know what a loan a mortgage was 50 percent down and five year termination okay five year uh maturity okay so it was people couldn't speculate and couldn't get loans so easy back then so we've had very easy mortgages a second real estate bubble and that of course that's why this poor generation can't afford to buy a new house or, or the same house a baby boomer could have when they were in their late 20s typically your first home purchase is, is, is peaks at 31, and then your second home, your trade-up home, your largest home peaks at 42. Well, for this generation, they're not getting their first home until 34 to 35, and 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 who knows when they're going to get their trade-up home. Uh, and and that's why the economy the economy will solve this overnight, David. All we need is a big recession, which will look at more like a depression, and real estate will come down, and this is my forecast as well, stocks 86%, real estate will come down for the average house, 50%, and people say, oh, that can't happen. We just saw 34% in the last downturn, which the central banks purposely cut off before it did its work, okay? That would have, so 50% so is not a stretch, and this is what's gonna hurt most people. The stock market goes down, comes back faster. Real estate didn't bottom in the last downturn. 
2008 crisis until mid-2012, six years later. Stocks bottomed a couple years later, okay? So, so real estate is what's going to hit people the hardest, and we will not, we probably will not, and I've been predicting this for a long time, not just really, we will not see the peak real estate prices we've seen here for the rest of our lifetimes, if ever. Not even in the millennial boom, because the millennial boom will not be in a bubble era like the roaring 20s or like the 90s and 2000s here. So, so, so real, they'll drive real estate back up, but it will not get to bubble levels because it will not be a bubble boom. What people have to realize, and, and I've, 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 my, my recent books have been bubble, bubble this, you know, roaring, you know, 2000 stuff. We won't see this again. We will not see a bubble economy for, for our kids will probably not even see a bubble economy decades and decades from now. They are rare. The last bubble economy was the early 1900s into 1929. It happens once in a lifetime at most. Every 80 to that bubble cycle is a 90 year cycle. The saving cycle is, is from the kind of early 50s into retirement, age 63, okay? So that's when people save. They're not even there yet. Yeah, they're saving a little bit, but they're, this is going to clear them so they can actually, the, 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 the millennials will actually be able to invest in financial assets from real estate to stocks to bonds at fair valuations again so they can actually appreciate in the next boom, their boom, okay? The baby boomers are seeing a totally artificial bubble here that, that was way past their natural peak in 2007. We should have been in a downturn since then. And so this is an artifice, but if this is gonna kill the baby boomers because they're the ones in retirement now or about to enter retirement, the last third of them, and they are not going to have that as much savings as they thought. And they're gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I gotta keep working. I can't even afford to retire. This is gonna be the biggest crisis in the baby boomers life. The biggest crisis of the Bob Hope generation was the Great Depression. This is gonna be the big crisis. The, the, the final kind of depression into this is gonna hit the baby boomers the hardest because they're going to need that net worth that's gonna disappear at the speed of light. And I mean disappear, not come back. First of all, the natural time, the natural cycles would turn up around late 2024. So 2025 on would be bullish without stimulus is what I'm saying, okay? That's when we will see the millennials actually for good solid reasons driving up the economy again, okay? So now that could start a little later by pushing this out. This, this, this crisis, this crash now uh, that only started at the beginning of 2022 with the peak in the S&P 500 is likely to last well into mid to late 2024 when it normally in the cycles would have been over by late 2020, early 2023. So if we have this crash, if this crash is allowed to continue and they don't blow their way out of this one, and you gotta remember they've been tightening now for a year, okay? And, 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 and they're about to stop that, but not turn around and loosen again. So, so they're still in a, in, a, in, a, in a tightening mode overall, okay? So if the economy keeps going down, then we could be over this as early as the summer of 2024 for the stock market. And I would say at the latest, late 2024. It depends on how it proceeds from here. But if this crash, if this third wave of the third wave I'm talking about, continues down and if it does it should you should see that by about mid-june give or take okay so not it's not gonna take long to see us down oh my gosh now we're not talking 30 some percent we're talking 50 some percent for the nasdaq okay and and, and close to that for the for the s p that's when people understand this is not a correction there's is, this is not something to be fixed by money printing we are in a deep downturn and then they get scared and then it's hard to get them spending money again because they're scared and they should be scared 2008-9 crash was 57% on the S&P 500. So, so yes, no, this this is basically what that crash should have been. Or if people didn't notice, it's pretty obvious, about half, about a year and a half into that crash, the central banks just stepped in and just, just started printing money uh, at unprecedented rates to blow us out of that. That's what basically happened. So that recession didn't really do its job of, of flushing out the greatest debt bubble in history, which I've been warning about for years and decades, uh, bigger than the roaring 20s, which ended up in a bubble in the stock markets and the, uh, the crash of a lifetime back then, now down 89% for the Dow, which was the leading index back then. I'm predicting as much as 86% for the S&P 500 in this crash and 92% on the NASDAQ. So in that realm of something you only literally see 
once in a lifetime, if that. So, so this is nothing, this is, what my point is, most financial advisors are right most of the time. You can just sit through most corrections and rebalance and that sort of stuff, because it's not easy to time the market as most people know, okay? But but this is so important that I am timing the market. I, ha I warned about this in my newsletter off the charts, two huge warnings in mid and late December saying this crash is about to happen. It is going to be the crash of your lifetime. And next thing you know, we were down 38% uh, in the NASDAQ uh, in, in October of last year. And that's just the first wave down. There's two more to follow. And I think we're just about to see, or we're, we've already started the next wave down, which could take the NASDAQ down to 8,000 just in this next wave, not, not the end of it. And that's going to be down a little over 50%. And that's when people are going to know this is not a big correction. It is a major crash, one that you have not seen in 73, 74, or 80, 82 in your lifetime, and one that even the millennials will not see a bigger crash than this when their boom and bust hits many decades. Never before, look at the Great Depression, look at any major downturn, the mid 70s, never before have central banks declared war literal war on recessions and said, we will not let the economy fall. Mario Draghi was the first one to say, he said to traders who were shorting the European markets back there in, in 2020, when we should have had the real crash started, okay? He said, I will print unlimited amounts of money. Do not bet against me, you damn traders. And that's what they've done. They have pushed this off, but even with all this unprecedented $9 trillion for the Fed alone and money printing, Never have we seen even a fraction of that, okay? Even with all of that, we keep falling back in a recession. We just came <laughs> we just came out of the COVID downturn. And with all this massive stimulus, $10 trillion, half of it fiscal, half of it monetary, the biggest single two-year stimulus in all of history, topping everything before that, and we're already falling in a recession again. That's the problem. The economy underneath is really, really weak and really needs to get rid of a lot of really bad debt and zombie companies. And the central banks won't let the economy do its thing. Oh, we're free market capitalists. No, we're not. If you trusted the free markets, you'd let the free markets do what they do. And central banks have declared war on the free markets. That's the problem. And the free markets, thank God, look like they're going to win this. I'm, I've been fretting to my subscribers saying, you know, I don't know if we'll ever have free markets again. I mean, this may never end. If the economy gets its way and we have this crash, it means the markets have taken back over. They're gonna do what the economy really needs and not listen to stupid central bankers who never had to run a business. Find me one that meets either of those two definitions or looks like it. What are these people doing in charge in the first place, okay? So that's that's what I see. The economy looks like, and this, this, that's why we're in a critical point right now. The economy is set by looking at the waves. And I've spent years and years studying what I call Elliott wave theory brought by Robert Prechter. He's another good guy to interview, by the way. Um, that this, we're about to hit this third wave of the third wave, which is when you basically, the crash gets its most momentum. If that happens, if they can't stop this, and I, I don't think they're gonna be able to stop it. I think it's gonna creep up on them before they can reverse their tightening. That's what, what shows people uh-oh, no, these guys do not have control of the economy. They're not able to stop this crash, and then they lose credibility.